As the province and the region continues to see an increase uh, in cases of COVID-19, I'm joined by our medical officer of health uh, with a local perspective. Welcome back to the show, Dr. Paul. Good to be back. All right, so uh, 30 uh, odd cases added over the weekend in our region. Today, a jump of 23. Uh, we're sitting at 383 overall, 116 active cases. Uh, let's talk about those numbers. Yeah, those numbers uh, are not pretty. Uh, they're, uh, they've increased tremendously. I think they've almost doubled since the end of the summer. And we've got a, a real big increase over the last couple of weeks, predominantly over the last weekend. Um, we, we do know how where they're coming from, though. We know that um, some of them, up until this weekend, were coming from the community. Community spread, well, one individual was in contact with another who we knew was positive or went to a party in Quebec or went to a party in Ottawa and then other people got positive. So we know that there were clusters of those cases. But now what we're also seeing, in addition to that, and actually mostly over the last 50 or 60 cases that we've added, um, have been, the predominant ones have been in long-term care facilities. We have one outbreak in Prescott Russell at the Re Residence Prescott Russell, where we have over 30 uh, individuals who are positive, uh, including mostly residents, but also staff. And we've got at least seven positive residents in another one closer to Cornwall at, in Alexandria uh, at another uh, retirement home. And so those cases are driving up our numbers, but it also shows us that the virus is still with us. And as long as it's in our community, uh, it'll sneak in to these vulnerable uh, situations. We're also seeing it in schools. At this point, we have 11 schools in our area that have cases. We have not closed any of them, however, and uh, there's only one outbreak. So that's the good news, and that hasn't changed over the last couple of, uh, uh, couple of days. So the bottom line is that we're seeing increases in our area. We're, we know where they are, but we also know that the, the more we buckle down, the more we can control the spread of, of the virus within the community, the less it's going to get into the vulnerable situations. Uh, absolutely. And we talk about that spread. I mean, we just have to look at today's numbers. Uh, you know, uh, the, you know, no new cases in the city of Cornwall or, or South Stormont. But other than that, every other municipality within the SDNG county saw at least one new case today. Yes, yes. And so the bottom line is that, you know, uh, for every case that we diagnose, there's probably a couple out there that we don't we don't test for, we don't diagnose. So it's an underestimation of the numbers. And what's been worrying us is the trend of upwards that we've been seeing in in both the, the numbers, the way that's spreading all over. It's not only one part of the Eastern Shore Health Unit, we're seeing it everywhere. And the fact that um, it's now getting into those vulnerable situations, which, which as, as many know, uh, was the source of death uh, in March to us uh, when we had the home in, in Plantagenet that had multiple cases. And so we really want to be careful right now. Um, now's the time, as you know, the uh, Ottawa, Peel and Toronto have been put into stage two. Um, and now's the time for us to buckle down even more because we're going up to that, 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 that slide upwards, which we don't want to have. We want to bring it down. And what we want to do is want to bring it down before our hospitals are overwhelmed, before, before our ICUs are, are overwhelmed. So the, the, the bright news is, is that although we do have hospitalizations right now, our hospitals are not overwhelmed, not to the extent that they were in March. But you know what? If it keeps on going, they're going to be overwhelmed. And when you mentioned bright spots, I think another one that we can maybe allude to is the fact that, uh, you know, the provincial modeling said that uh, that in Ontario, we could be seeing 1,200, 1,300 cases a day. Right now, we're at the 700 and 800, which are not small numbers to be sure. But maybe the message is, is getting across that people need to be doing the simple things that we keep uh, alluding to. So maybe talk a little bit about that as well, that uh, the, the, the time is always now to act. Yes, you know what, the time is now to act because if you don't act now, you'll see the repercussions in two weeks. So I'd rather act now and see a good repercussion in two weeks, good results, rather than not act now and see the uh, the, the fallout, you know, in a couple of weeks. So the numbers have been uh, steady in the 650, 700 range. As a matter of fact, they've been averaging over a seven-day period of about 740, um, which is better than we had reached 900 and as you said, uh, the potential of 1,200 a day. So I, I'm I'm actually taking a bit of um, uh, comfort, and when I'm seeing those numbers kind of you know uh, stabilize in Ontario, but it doesn't mean we can't it doesn't mean that we shouldn't get, that we should give up right now. Now's the time to act even more because we want to make sure that the numbers start going down. 
And just finally, uh, on a non-COVID related note, uh, the Eastern Ontario Health Unit did release uh, a reminder today, press release, uh, in terms of being careful around bats. Yes, uh, we've had uh, three, actually four bats that have been positive for rabies in our area. Uh, we haven't had any human cases, but uh, it just underscores the importance. If you're bitten by an, any wild animal, particularly a bat, or a raccoon, make sure you get medical attention because we need to give you a, a, a serum and vaccine for rabies because otherwise rabies is fatal. And so we wanted to put that out there to be, so people could be aware to ensure that they don't approach bats. If they get bitten by a bat, go to the hospital, obviously, or seek, seek medical attention. And if you've got bat infestations, we've got um, some guidelines of how to get rid of them in your home. Excellent. On that note, Doctor, thank you so much for joining me for uh, this week's update. And of course, we'll continue to look at, at these numbers and uh, hope that uh, we can flatten that curve. Thanks.